Today I want to talk about getting names in, in mediumship readings. Uh, names are not necessary, but they are meaningful to some clients, especially the kind of clients who want um, facts and figures like dates and names and how they passed and things like that. Um, but for other clients, um, what's more meaningful is um, personality traits, quirky personality traits, things privately said. Uh, I kind of swing both ways on that because I do like the facts and figures, but I'm also aware of how those can be Googled. And so when someone, you know, is reading me, they connect with my mom and they tell me things that she said only to me, private things that she only said to me in private. That's also very meaningful. So uh, I, sort of the overall point of this video is that people make, especially mediums, make way too big a deal about names. Um, and so what I do, because you have those two different kinds of clients, those are two very broad categories of want facts and figures or want more personalized information, um, personality type information or memories, shared memories. Uh, I try to remember every time I sit for a client to go in with the mindset of what does the client need to hear? And that helps sort of go in the direction that they want or need. Um, I think that making such a big deal out of names actually makes it harder uh, and making a big deal can be negative or positive because even when you say, oh, wow, you got their name, that's great. That's making a big deal and that makes it sound like it's hard, uh, like it's a challenging thing or a rare thing. Um, and, I, you know, I mean, think about that. If, you've, if you know you have a woman, you've got her in grandparents' generation, uh, you know, she was a telephone operator or did some kind of work with telephones, like that's, how is that any different than getting a name? I don't know. Uh, so... That's my feeling about that. Um, some, so I get names a lot. That's why I decided to do this video. And I get, I get them a bunch of different ways. Um, sometimes I will hear something, sounds like it's shouted at a distance. Uh, often I'll see multiple people in my head, like all the Debbies or Debras I've ever known will suddenly be in my mind. Um, uh, lately I've been seeing someone in the room with me and in my mind's eye, and it's, it's often a famous person and their name is the name of the person I'm connected to or someone really closely connected to uh, the person in spirit. So however you, um, I'm in some development circles where newish mediums, I sit for them um, and we read each other, but mostly I'm there to sit for them. And when they see people getting names, they do too, because it's not, they don't regard it as these brand new mediums. They don't regard it as an unusual thing. It's like a normal part of a reading. And so I think that's an important mindset to get right at the beginning of your development, that it's a normal, normal thing. Um, so however you can play with that, like I didn't get dates for, I don't know, a couple of years. I was just, you know, people would mention dates or at least months or times of year even. I got nothing. And I, I would feel all kinds of things for that. I tried, to, I tried all kinds of ways, managing calendars or running through months or whatever in my head, nothing seemed to work. And then I realized that I know numbers by touch because I put numbers in a spreadsheet all day long. So uh, I started putting my hand on an imaginary keyboard and, and I knew when they hit seven over and over again, I was supposed to say July or the seventh of the month. And that always seems to work out or usually seems to work out. So, so play with the names thing, however you think you might get it and let it happen the way it happens. Don't insist. Like I didn't insist to use the keypad. I just thought, well, maybe this is something that'll make sense or that we can connect with, and it seemed to work. But a lot of things before that, that I'm not even gonna go into, did not work. <laughs> so there's that. Um, also, just like you, I tell clients, invite the person that you want to hear. Um, invite them out loud, and if you feel silly doing that, at least in your head, talk to the person that you want to come through in a reading. And so I do the same thing as a medium. I tell them, I want names. I want one person, <laughs> initially. I want one clear communicator. I want names. I want to know how you passed. Um, and I often get them. But that's sort of an intent that I set up uh, when doing my readings. So um, another way I get them, and, and this is what I want to say, is I don't insist on any particular way. It's just how I get a lot of information. So one way I get names, but I also get other information is I'll see two unrelated things and the thing they have in common is what I'm supposed to say. So uh, I was reading this woman once, I could see the top of a Sarah Lee's cheesecake in my mind's eye and right next to that was a picture of my father in the military. My father's name was Lee, so uh, my father Lee and Sarah Lee's cheesecake, Lee was the common name and it turned out that Lee was the uh, son of the person that I, living son that, of the person that I was connected to. Um, 
I, I once uh, had just seen a trailer for a movie that was making references to the to the drug Molly, um, and and I was also saying Molly Shannon. So I said uh, Molly is the name connected with this person. It was I knew it was a grandmother that I had, and her granddaughter, who was my client, laughed. She said that's her dog's name. That was her dog's name. Uh, so they would be together now. So um, seeing two different or being aware of two different things and, and taking the thing in common between them is, is how I often get information. Um, but I play with it and I recommend you play with it. Don't insist. That's never worked for me. Insisting on things has never worked for me. Uh, I don't know that it's worked for anyone really well. Maybe, I mean, I'm open to being wrong about that for sure. So, uh, and don't try to do it like you've seen other people do it. Any aspect of mediumship, you have to do it your way. So if if like I have a, an acquaintance who hears things a lot, um, way better than I do, and and among the things she hears are names, for example, and I'm just not, I haven't been that good at that, I shouldn't say that. That I haven't, uh, that's not one of my strong points, I shouldn't even say that because, well, that's the topic of my next video. So play with names, they're absolutely possible, don't make a big deal out of it, that's what I have to say on that subject. Next week, I'm gonna talk about excuses, things mediums should not say, like, I'm not very good at hearing things, I just did it. It's very easy to fall into that trap. Um, when you say things like, oh, I'm not good at getting names, or I'm not good at clear audience, that helps make that true, so stop saying that. <laughs> That's next week's video. Um, thank you for watching this time. Leave your questions or comments below, and uh, see you next time.